get started. Um, I want to thank Mother Goddess, uh, Father God, for our divine connection. I want to thank all of the mothers who have come here before us and who have paved the way and who is who we honor today and who we want to continue and desire to continue to honor so that we can open up the way, the, the, the returning of the matriarch. Um, may we continue to go into our mother's bosom and find comfort. May we continue to uh, receive mother's protection. May we continue to go to mother for her wisdom. And may we also continue to be led by the wisdom and the instruction of mother, because we know it is only in divine love that she comes through and that she works through us for the benefit of the all. Um, I want to thank you for being here. Um, Ashe, I mean, and our woman. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me today. Um, the topic today is uh, toxic compassion and healthy detachment. Toxic compassion and healthy detachment. Why this topic? Um, recently, I was met with some issues. I know I've, I've, I've heard my elder wise women tell me that as I get older, uh, I would, they would say it in this way. They would say that you will lose friends. And, and I don't even want to look at things like that as a loss. I want to look at it as a release and a removal, right? So um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time, but I did want to come to you with some revelations that I and some downloads that I received from the mothers, the wise mothers. And I'm just so honored that um, they have they have given me assignment in certain areas of spreading their their word and spreading their wisdom and sharing in that um, motherly love, right? But also, if if we think about it, you know, our mother's love is many times for those of us, even if our, our, our relationship with our mothers were strained, we still always desired and yearned for our mother's love, right? It could have been strained, it could have been tumultuous, you know, it could have been downright hurtful, evil, abusive. But in our heart of hearts, we've always desired our mother's love. Why? Because she is our portal of existence. She is our nurturer. She's our God. She's our our very first connection to this earthly realm. Whether you came here and was raised with your actual biological mother, or you came here and you, you were raised by an adopted mother, an adopted parents, and an adopted family. The truth remains that, biologically speaking, in your mother being your transportation, there is always going to be some divine connection, um, even if the the relationship is strained and tumultuous. There's still going to be that umbilical connection, that DNA code of connection to our mothers, right? So um, I say this to say that with that, when we deal one in, with another, as sisters, right? As friends, as confidants, we are still looking for that connection to mother. Why? When we get together as women, we what automatically heal. It it happens like that. Why? Because we are the mothers. We have that genuine compassion. We have that genuine nurturing ability. We have this. And, and some of our us are 
moving and navigating through life and through this earth and our compassion as well as our attachments have become toxic due to experiences that we've experienced while we were children or things that we have been conditioned and programmed within the culture. Many of our relationships with our friends, our mates, our children, our coworkers, our church members, our associates have a thread of toxicity based on where you are in healthy patterns of self-love, right? So something that I was made very aware of recently is that I still had levels of codependency. Transparent moment here. You know, I don't know other way to come. Why? Because I'm a spiritual being having a very human experience. And in this human experience of me experiencing God and God experiencing uh, uh, themselves through me, I am learning each step of the way. And as I learn, I share without fear and without shame and without bitterness and disgust. I'm learning, you're learning, we're learning. So as I learn and as I develop and as I explore and examine as things are being exposed to me about the nature of what it means to be in this human avatar experience, I recognize that it's not so much about me releasing people as much as about me releasing the attachments and the codependency. In the trauma bonding experience, many times we will connect with other people because we have similar stories, right? When you speak to that person because that person has a similar story, you feel heard, you feel validated. But we have to be aware that many times, just because it sounds like a person may have a similar story, their story may not be similar at all other than people can come and mirror you in order to attach to you, to be an acquaintance, an associate or friend because they need something from you. And it doesn't necessarily have to be anything physical. It can be your energy. It can be how you pour into them and they need that. That's their level of what? codependence. Let's be clear. We all have interdependence. No one walks this earthly realm alone. You didn't come here alone, right? You came through the vessel in the portal of your mother, period. Mama's baby, daddy's mate. That's a very real statement, right? Like, you know what 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 womb you came through if you don't know nothing else okay even those of us who've been adopted we know we came through a womb none of us came through a thousand all of us came through the portal of the transportation of the womb many of us had the opportunity to be breastfed meaning we also got our nourishment from our first person, our mother. The mother-child relationship is so significant that if your mother is unhappy, if your mother is, is, is handling stress in unhealthy manners, if your mother does not show signs of self-love and she shows signs of overwhelm and, 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 and servitude and all, all of those things are also reactionary with the child with the with the child with us 
we react to those things. We set up barriers. We set up, uh, we set up uh, boundaries. We or we or we lack boundaries or we lack barriers. It's one or the other. And I say this clearly to bring the example that based on how our mothers. experienced and handled their emotional, mental wellness is a reflection of how we too will experience emotional and mental wellness. You know, you hear people say, cancer runs through my, my bloodline. Cancer is a family, is in our family history. Diabetes is in our family history. High blood pressure is in our family history. Um, you know, these different ailments and diseases and discomforts and all of that is in the family history, right? Well, if you continue to do the same things in the same way that mama, auntie, grandmama, daddy, all them did, what, what you've seen, if they, if you continue to see that, that is the only, that's the only behavior you have to to pattern and that's what you're gonna do. Even as much as when we're young and we say, we never gonna do that. I'm never gonna do what my mama did. I'm never gonna say that to my child. I'm never, you end up becoming an adult and finding yourself saying and doing some of the same things you vowed when you were young that you would never ever do, right? No one's exempt, no one's exempt. The relationship between a child and the mother is so atomically important and essential to how we carry out our relationships with others and how we set up routines and rituals and how we go through life. It's so connected to our mothers that many people, many times who even have been adopted, find out who their birth mother is and their, their correlations of their behaviors are still mirroring one another. Even though she's never been around her mom or she, he's, ne he's never been around his father, he's never been around his mother. You think these things automatically, especially mother-daughter relationships, they automatically mirror one another, right? So as some of you may know, in 2020, late 2022, I released my, my marriage. And in releasing my marriage, I wasn't just releasing the husband. What I was really releasing was the programming of what marriage is in this patriarchy. That's what I was releasing. And what I'm finding is that no matter how much a man says he's values the goddess, even honors the mothers and the goddess, as long as we have been taught and conditioned and programmed in this patriarchal system and the patriarchy benefits men, there are always going to be more adjusted and frequently accepting of the patriarchy because it still benefits them. So even though they say they, they even though they could value the, the mothers, they can they can honor the goddess, they can honor the wisdom, they can do all of that, the patriarchy still benefits men and their behavior. And it's very hard for men to detach from that because it's a benefit. There's opportunity in it for them. Right. So I don't. With me understanding that, I don't even, I can't put all the nest, you know, the the the, the blame or on 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 you know my husband, my 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 
previous husband. I can't do that because I understand in the system and in the world in which we live in. He was only doing what he was raised and taught to do. And it's not just him. This is generations and generations and generations and generations. And it wasn't just going to be cut off and changed and, and removed and shifted and reestablished in one, in one uh, relationship. It was That's not how that works. That's not how that works. So... In me removing that, that was one of my big pivotal points of releasing codependency. Now, I, I, you know, you know, when we have a big win, many times we think, "Oh, we made, it. we good." Oh, I did, I did it. Oh, we don't know. That's only just one layer that has been exposed, honey. That's just one layer of what has been exposed. I got some more layers attached to this, but when we get a big win, we think we didn't made it, right? We go kick our feet up and get comfortable, and honey, the mothers will come through, Holy Spirit will come through, Spirit team will come through, honey, the, them working for you in that world will come through, like, like look, we're gonna drop something else in your lap. Let's see, let's see if you really done. Let, let let's see where you at. What what where, what level are you on on the continuum of growth in this area? Where are you, right? So I realized that not only did I, and I also had a situation uh, also in 2023 where I actually shifted the relationship with my mother and my maternal family for the betterment and the health of myself, right? Um, being raised with a mother who gaslights is, I mean, and always feeling like I had to live up and I had to prove myself and I wasn't wrong and, and, and I didn't, I didn't mean it like that. Like I was always constantly proving and, and, and trying to re get, receive her acceptance, her acceptance, just acceptance and acknowledgement, right? So when you are raised needing acceptance and acknowledgement, that means you're ultimately saying that you need others to help define you. And coming into my late 50s, coming into my wisdom years and understanding growth that comes with your wisdom years, I've been coming upon the word called sovereignty. You might want to write that down. Sovereignty, being sovereign. And when I first heard the word, I'm going to be very real. It sounded very, very foreign. I'm like, what is this sovereign? What is this sovereignty? And it kept coming up. It was like coming up like 20 times a week. Like I opened a book, word sovereign. I look on, on the uh, internet, the word sovereign. Or somebody be talking in conversation, the word sovereign. I look on the TV, something said sovereignty insurance. You know, it's just like, this word kept coming up for me. And when I see something that keeps coming like that, I know that that is everything in the universe and in the source of all things communicating with me that this is something I need to explore and experience. So understanding and in, in, in Delving into what it means to be sovereign, I understand that it directly is associated with not having to be defined. Standing in your own space, shining your beautiful light, owning all of your gifts and your flaws, and relishing in all of it with even if you don't have support, even if you don't have people rooting for you, even if you don't have people you can call on to just chit chat about it and, and go into a cipher and mix it up and, you know, receive, uh, you know, recipes and formulas, even if you don't have that, it's really about you owning who you are as your goddess source and be in your connection to the source of all things and being simply 
simply and excitingly and over abundantly. Did you hear me? Simply, excitingly, over abundantly secure in that. That's, that's that space right there. That's the school and the experience that I'm having. So in that, I had to understand what is toxic? What are these toxic relationships? What is this toxicity that 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 I'm experiencing? What is this? What you know, me releasing and removing these, these levels of codependency. What, why, you know, why is it, why am I codependent to this? Why? Because it was trauma bonding associated and there's toxicity in trauma, right? So I'm going to get into what is toxic. And I want you just to bear with me, please. Come on. Y'all with me? Y'all feeling good today? If you don't know, I'm Tracy, the sacred CEO, founder, educator of Love My Womb Academy, the largest Female Health and Wellness Academy in the nation, board certified. Um, and I'm very, very happy to be here. I am also known as a priestess, um, as well as an educator, prophetess, oracle, and speaker. And I thank you. I thank you again for being here. Let's go into toxic. Can we see that screen? Can everyone see that screen? Can you hear me? And can you see the screens? And can someone tell me? Yes. You see yeah, the I can hear you and I can see the screen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let me turn this up and make sure we get all the value. Okay. Toxic. Containing or being poisonous material, especially when capable of causing death or serious debilitation. Debilitating. What does it mean to be debilitated? It means to be uh, halted, okay? To not work properly, to, to, for you not to function at your highest level of performance, right? Debilitating, something debilitating. Toxic waste, um, exhibiting symptoms of infection, okay? So it's to uh, toxicosis. Um, patient becomes toxic in two days later. Um, extremely harsh, malicious, or harmful, such as toxic sarcasm. Um, I've known people who have been, you know, toxic in, in their sarcasm. They, we call it throwing shade. <laughs> you know, that's toxic. That's, 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 you know, that's throwing the rock and trying to hide your hand. Most people who are sarcastic, um, it comes from a place of, uh, Ill intent, yeah, it does. I mean, if you you know to be to be sarcasm and sarcastic and not just say what you mean, but to try to throw shade and hurt me with it, that's a, that's harmful, right? So extremely harsh, malicious, malicious, and sarcastic, sarcasm. Excuse me, relating to being an asset that has lost. I like this one. Relating to being an asset that has lost. So much value that it cannot be sold on the market. Or well, I'll put it better. Relating to or being an asset that has lost so much value that it is no longer good. Right? We all know we've all been in a toxic relationship or two. Some of us may still be in toxic relationships, okay? A toxic substance, right? So toxic, the, the actual synonym for toxic would be poison, right? Um, a toxic substance. It doesn't necessarily just have to do with relationships, right? Many of us are what? We may be allergic to some medications. That would be toxic to your body. You can't take it because it has a what? A allergic reaction that causes what? Pain. It has lost its what? Value when it comes to you and your DNA. Okay? Some things start off as an asset and at some point they lose value. 
it, it is what it is. It doesn't mean they're not valuable. They're just no longer valuable to you or you no longer see value in it, right? So I wanted to go through that one and I wanted to come here and share with you also, um, let's go into what is compassion? What is compassion? All right, this one, it kind of struck me. It struck me a little uh, differently because they said compassion is the sympathetic pity. Listen good. Concerning suffering and misfortune of others. Sympathetic pity, they use the word pity. Um, concerning sufferings and misfortunes of others, right? Pity, some similar words, synonymous. Pity, sympathy, feeling, fellow feeling, empathy, all right? Understanding, care, concern, sensitivity, tenderheartedness, soft-heartedness, warm-heartedness. We all have a healthy level of compassion, but when does compassion become toxic? That's what we're speaking about here. Toxic compassion. Compassion is a social feeling that motivates people to go out of their way, out of their way to relieve the physical, mental, and emotional pains of others and themselves. Compassion is sensitivity to the emotional aspects of yourself or another human being. Right? So compassion can be healthy. But when, when do we release ourselves from compassion? Compassion, and why I came up with this toxic compassion is because I recognize that that's the area in which I was in with a lot of people. I was in the area of toxic compassion. It was no longer bringing value. It began to bring harm to myself and the other person, right? So toxic compassion, also known as toxic empathy, is known as occurs when an individual over empathizes with others absorbing too much of their emotional energy to their own detriment. Signs include feeling drained after social interactions, difficulty setting boundaries, experiencing others' pain as your own, and it prioritizes short-term emotional comfort over long-term outcomes. It prioritizes short-term emotional comfort, all right, over long-term term outcomes. So it's empathy for another on a toxic level. You're absorbing too much of their energy. You've made their energy your own. I know we've all experienced that at some point in our life where we've gotten with someone, we're happy, they've come in depressed, now they're leaving happy, and now you're depressed. They're leaving, They didn't. y'all didn't swap energies, right? Why? Because everything is energetic. So we have, what I learned and, and I'm in my 50s and I learned how valuable this information is right here. We have to be very aware of how much access we give to people, right? We should not have to wait till it gets to the point of you know, we cussing one another out or, um, you know, we, we have bad things to say about the person now because we have overextended and over-involved ourselves and over probably overcompensated and overgave. Now, the thing about overgiving and overcompensating and overexerting yourself, 
that usually comes from a level of codependency. So it always goes back, even though we have had involvements with people and it didn't turn out the way we would have liked, or maybe you feel like you've given too much, you've served too much, you said too much, or maybe even the other person feels that way about you, right? The, 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 the thing that I recognize, it has to do with levels of codependency. Codependency is not all about just relying on a person to be there, be there, be there, give, 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 share, share, share. Codependency also looks like trying to control the relationship, right? Why are you trying to control the relationship? Maybe because you fear um, what the person will think right, of you if you stood up and said what was truly on your heart. Maybe you fear um, being so-called abandoned, right? The person leaving you, not having access to their emotional um, reservoir, their emotional pool, right? Maybe the fear of not feeling validated, okay? Or it, it's something in there that this person gives you and you give this person. Because what I find is most toxic relationships that have toxic compassion and unhealthy attachments usually have a fear of letting go because of trauma that has been associated in their life before they be, even became friends. It really has nothing to do. And, and I was able to see that in these fat past few weeks because what I recognize is that my not what I should have done in certain instances. I should have released a relationship years ago when I first felt and seen something that didn't agree with my spirit. I should have released it with love years ago and I did it. I held on to it because I was exemplifying toxic compassion, right? And so with that, what I recognize in my inability to release it, that person all too also was struggling with toxic, toxic compassion and her inability to let go, which she knew she needed to let go a while back so that she could stand in her fullness of her potential and do what she needed to do without me, without her feeling like she had to protect my feelings in any kind of way. And I just feel like because we both lacked that, this how we, it ended up where, where the universe and, and the mothers and, and all sorts of energy ended, ended it anyway, ended the, the relationship anyway, right? So these are things that I'm realizing about myself. But one thing I do also realize about people is that when people lack certain levels of confidence for themselves, they will attach to people that have a lot of light and a lot of confidence because that's something that they need. That's something they need to be fed that, right? And a lot of times they won't necessarily have the same situations as you. However, they will mirror you in what your situation and ex experience is. And they will mirror you based on your levels of conversation and what they pick up. So whenever you are in relationships and you hear people saying, we, we healing girl, or we, yeah, they sending us through it and all that. When you ever hear this, we and us, be very mindful when you hear that we and us, because understand that you may be going through certain things on certain levels, but your experience is very much individual. Okay. So kind of just be, you know, be a mindful of that the mirroring okay so let's go into what is healthy matter of fact i'm gonna um i want to know does anyone have anything they want to say to this before i move on to help you detach and start letting go okay no okay thank you and once again welcome <laughs> all right so 
I want to go into healthy detachment. And what does that even mean? We have attachments. We have attachments to our family. We have attachments to our social circles. We have attachments to organizations. We have attachments to our jobs, to our careers. We have attachments to, you know, uh, our neighborhood. We have attachments. We have attachments. To, we have attachments we don't even know we have. You know that, right? Because it comes so, it's so common. I don't even want to say normal. I don't like to use the word normal because like what the hell is normal? right? Everybody has a, a definite blueprint that is uh, solely for them, right? Even though we're sharing this thing. Um, so what is normal? No, um, I want to say common. We have so many detachments. I mean, so many attachments that are really, really common to our lives that we don't even recognize. We don't, real, we don't even recognize how attached we are to our, to our vehicles. We don't realize how attached we are to our houses. We don't realize how attached we are to people. Um, you know, to our families, to our little babies, you know, how attached we are to what our mothers, how attached we may be to our fathers, how attached we are to our children, you know, and these attachments, once again, can be what? Toxic. How many of us as mothers have exemplified toxic attachment and toxic compassion for our children because we call ourselves protecting them from the inevitable? I have, I raised, I raised both hands and my two feet. I didn't do anything but delay my children's process of what they assigned, that what they their contract is about. We have to remember with our children, we brought them here, true enough. They have been transported by our wombs, the portals of our wombs. We have been a, a God source to them. In the same breath, they also have their own soul assignment that we have nothing to do with. It's the same thing in every relationship of our lives. We have seasons, reasons, and of course, some of us lifetimes, right? But everything is seasons and reasons. And even with our children, even though we are attached through blood currency with our children, Right, we have this 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 DNA uh, mitochondrial relationship. Right, even though we have that that attachment and pull is so so strong that many times because we are gods, because the because women we are gods, we will do our best to shift and and, and rearrange the atmosphere and create different formulas for our children so that they don't have to receive certain pains and problems and, and you know, issues and hardships. We will do that as gods and don't even realize we are doing the work of God. Why? Because it comes natural. It comes natural, right? And we do this. There's something that our, some of our children were supposed to learn when they were 16 and they have not gotten it yet because we are still protecting them. Now they're 24 going into a relationship and because they didn't get what they needed to get at 16, because we called ourselves protecting them, having what? Toxic compassion, right? Unable to detach in that area. You're not detaching from your child. You can never detach from your child. But in that area, we did not allow them the process of their learning. The process of developing, should I say, the process of getting their activations and their active and their code activations in which they need for their DNA in order to live up to their soul assignment. We are delaying many of their processes. I've done it. And so things that they should have gotten before they've gotten into the adulthood of the 20s, they received it at 25, 26 when I finally was fed up and released and said, you know, I can't do this no more because you're just not getting it. No, they're not getting it because you didn't, we didn't allow them to get it. We went into protection mode and we do that as women, as nurturers. We, we, we call it loving them. Right. 
But we also do that with ourselves. We do that with ourselves. Um, it took me a while to release my children on that level. And it took lots of therapy. Why? Because I have abandonment issues, right? I have codependency issues. Just as much as I overcompensated and overstimulated my children, I also too in that was very codependent on my children and the need to feel validated by them. And whenever you have a need to feel validated by your children who are growing and becoming adults, oh, you give them access to manipulate the shit out of it. And it can be very overwhelming, time consuming and emotional draining to almost you will have a nervous breakdown. And it came a point to where I had to detach, create healthy detachment for my children and create very bold boundaries. And I had to release them for about eight months and go into therapy because of my over dependence, my codependence. Right. So th this this line of codependence has been an issue in my life for a very long time. And I see it. I see it. I, I see what it is I need to see, right? So let's talk about what is emotional attachment? Emotional detachment, also known as emotional blunting, is a condition or state which a person lacks emotional connectivity to others. That's emotional detachment. However, healthy detachment is the process by which we emotionally disconnect from negative toxic emotions or behaviors in order to protect and care for ourselves. So emotional detachment and healthy detachment are two different things, although they are dealing with emotions, right? So emotional detachment is known as the condition or the state in which a person lacks emotional connectivity to others, unable to access any, a connection with another person on an emotional level. We've had experiences like that where some people are just emotionally unavailable, right? Okay. However, healthy detachment is the process by which we emotionally disconnect from negative and toxic emotions and behaviors in order to protect and care for us. It is not separate from life, but it's a freedom within our mind, exploring life, exploring living. Living it, it helps us to accept that we cannot control everything, especially our addicted loved ones, the ones we're addicted to, the things we're addicted to, we can't control that, right? And it, it, it helps us to, healthy detachment helps us to avoid obsessing and controlling and manipulating situations. It's the ability to observe our emotions, my emotions, your emotions, without judgment or attachment, and to respond in a more healthy, emotionally intelligent response. That's healthy detachment. And if you cannot detach in healthy ways, you will detach and when it happens, it's not going to be. How many of us have blown up at our husbands or blown up at our mates, blown up at our kids, right? How many of us have done that? Why? Because we have not created levels and forms of healthy detachment from certain behaviors to the point we have overcompensated and we are involved way too much in a situation, okay? So it just doesn't happen. It, it happens in different on different levels of understanding, relationship, in areas of our life that we must understand this is all part, all part of our avatar walk here on this earthly planet. And I'm just so honored to come to you today and share with you my development, my experience, my exploration, right, of where I am on the continuum <laughs> of evolution.
right? So as coming to you um, as a mother, coming to you from the mothers, the Iyami, giving offerings to my mother Oya, um, giving offerings to mother Ajay, the magic and the wisdom of Ajay, giving offering to mother Kwan Yin, the, the, the compassionate one, the healer, okay? Giving, giving honor to mother goddess Isham, the healer, the fertile one. All of these mothers that I named are involved in our protection and our healing. My mother Oya, I come through like the wind anyway. So when things happen for me many times, it is quick, swift, and usually comes through very like like a like a rushing, rolling wind and wipes everything clean. I have experienced that through most of my life. Why? Because I'm a child of Oya. Most of my life, things have been. Clear cut, swim, bite, wash my queen. And I just come back and be like, like, huh, okay, here I am, still standing too. Those are children of Oya that can experience this, right? And then the compassionate part of Kuan Yin to give me that comfort, to give me that, that love, that, to give me that healing that I so deserve, the healing medicine the medicine. Then I have Mother Ashe, who gives me the wisdom and the magic and, the, and the, the ability to recreate, reinvent, and nourish. Okay? Yes. So I give honor and thanks and grace to the mothers. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of, of, of this experience and allow me to share the wisdom in um, what I'm experiencing. I appreciate you. Is there anyone who wants to speak today and talk a little bit about um, maybe some of the value of this discussion? Um, you wanna give honor to the mothers, you have a prayer. Maybe you want to talk about our 21 day detox because today is day 21 and we have ended our 21 day detox. So grateful about that. Um, anybody have anything they want to share before we end today? Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Sister Rhonda, um, you want to come in and talk about when you're going to be meeting with us in the Coochie Church to share about sacred movement, movement for the divine feminine? Greetings, and uh, I I got in late to the church today, so uh, I'm gonna share the um uh, I'm gonna share the um uh, of course the recording, so we're gonna be good. Yes, yeah, so I'm looking forward to sharing with all the the goddesses about sacred movement and how it benefits us and how it connects us to the higher consciousness of our in, within ourselves. And how through movement and breath, we invoke the energies of the higher realities of life. And yes, yes, I'm looking forward to sharing. Yes, and if you don't, y'all don't know, uh, Sister Rhonda, we call her the Basu. Come on, tell them how, how you got your credentials and everything, Rhonda, and, and, and how, you know, how, that, matter of fact, that's how we met. Yes, I am a Basu with in the comedic uh tradition is a teacher of the sacred movement of comedic yoga. And uh I received my certification in 2014 in Jamaica. I went and was trained and certified, and I've been practicing since that time. And really connecting with some great, brilliant, genius minds, such as the goddess Tracy and so many others, both here in the United States and abroad. So it's a great way of connecting to yourself and through yourself 
knowledge and connection and love, you connect with so many others on that mm -hmm. consciousness. <laughs> Yes, I love it, sis. Thank you so much. So for those of you <clears throat> who are um who are ready to understand what it means to really um go into sacred movement and how that it raises your divine feminine consciousness, you can go into Facebook and go into the Coochie Church. Um, we have a close community there. That's where uh Basu Rhonda will be coming on, coming in, and that is next Sunday. What time did we say, Rhonda? Was that 9 a.m.? Next Sunday, the 26th? 10. 10, okay, 10. <laughs> you were clear. 10, okay. So, yes, because she's going to be coming um, and sharing about the wisdom of sacred movement is so important that we understand that with us being in these vessels, in these vehicles, that movement is a must. Anything that's not moving is not living. Let's be clear. It, it's, it, it needs to be, we need to vibrate higher. And in vibrating higher, we should always be increasing and evolving in higher consciousness, in higher energy, in higher movement. It doesn't necessarily mean more. It means <clears throat> levels of and degrees of knowledge, right? So as we so-called age, we should be getting better. We should be feeling better. We should be, you know, answering our divine call better. We should be um, definitely uh, evolving in a space in place that is better. And sometimes in us becoming better, it's going to be necessary that we have, we use an, a healthy art of releasing and letting go. Everything, think about it. When you was in the sixth grade, going into junior high school, what you had to release the, 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 the old elementary scene and you had to go into what? You had to go into to, to, to the next level of your life, the next level of your rites of passage, the next level of your initiation. We are constantly going through rites of passage, constantly going through initiations. We don't recognize that that's what they are, but that's definitely what they are. And in that, you should be learning, you should be developing, you should be taking notes, honey. <laughs> you should be taking notes. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the Group chat, the okay, I just put in the actual link for the closed group, the Coochie Church. And I also want to say in that group, we actually have a free the steaming for self-care course that is uh all free because I want you to get to that level of healing and connecting with your own space. I'm very, very dedicated to the health and wellness of women in their wombs. And uh, with that, I am offering my love offering of that free course for you as well. So um, let me go over here and tell you there is a, yeah, there's a free course. So we're gonna be meeting again, May 26th, 10 o'clock in the Coochie Church. And Basu Rhonda is going to come share her knowledge and wisdom concerning sacred moon. If there's nothing else, I wanna tell you that the healthy art of le letting go and um, healthy detachment is necessary for every level of your life. As you grow in, as you go into maturity, maturing with age, you will notice that there's going to be things that you used to be able to do that you can't do. And I tell people all the time, I can't reach the like I used to. Girl, I remember I used to be able to drink here, drink there, get up the next day, do it all over again. Uh -uh. No, no, my, my body is not the same. Right. So everything, the only thing that remains the same is change. Right. So you too are changing. You too are developing. You too are evolving. And I'm just so happy that we had our 21 day detox because it really took me to my next level of understanding, of awareness. Um, this is, if I believe that within this 21 days of detox that we just did, no sugar, no bread, no processed foods. Um, no dairy, no meat. I, I truly believe no alcohol. I truly believe that this is what helped me um, process my level of 
codependency, toxic compassion, and the art of letting go, healthy detachment. This particular detox, now I've done three within the last, I did three, I did one, it was like <clears throat> nine days. And then my second one was about 36, 40 days, something like that, because I went to 21 and I went past that. And then this last one was today, 21, but I continuously keep doing them. Why? Because I want to take this on as a lifestyle. I want my, I want to internalize and consume food with intention. I want everything I do to be with intention, to be in prayer, to be in, in divine higher alignment with the mothers. And so I'm really paying attention to that. I'm really becoming more self-aware. And that's what should be what this journey is about, becoming self-aware. How do I become more self-aware? By changing my habits and changing my food choices right? Eating higher vibrational foods so that I can vibrate higher, think more clearly, have more energy, and so that I can see myself. I'm not so dimmed. My light isn't dim. My um, psychological processes, my mental state isn't dimmed. You know, my energy levels aren't dim. My, my uh, activations aren't dulled. You know, I need to get the downloads. I need to be activated in these ways that are going to segue me into my levels of rites of passage and evolution. So, and I hope you are doing the same. All right. Um, before I leave, once again, does anyone have anything they want to say? Concerning the topic or the foods or the fasting or the yoga or the... I want to thank you for allowing me to share what the Divine Mothers have given me here today on the Poochie Church. Um, I honor you. I honor the goddess in you. I honor the mothers that protect and that bring you safe passage into this earthly realm. I, I honor your mother. I honor your spirit team. I honor your God source. And I thank you. I thank you so much. May you go forth, be protected in love, peace, blessing, prosperity, alignment, wisdom. And also, if you got to pick up the sword and shut it down, may you also be protected in that. In all, everything, all in good measure, in good faith. In good divine timing. Ashe. Amen and amen. Peace and blessings. Thank you, beloved. I appreciate all of your love and support. Go forth and be great. Have a great Sunday.